Zap, 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 lightning, zap, zap, lightning, lightning, fade out. Hello everybody, it's me, the Lego Dude, and in today's video I will be talking about every Lego Star Wars set which is going to be retiring in 2023. I already made a video about this almost two months ago, but since then there's been a lot of updates, so I'm making this video now which has a completely up-to-date list. Like I said in my last video about these sets retiring in 2023, most of them will have an official retirement date of December 31st, but will probably be unavailable by late November, so if you want any of them, you should probably get them as soon as possible. First up, we have three sets that were removed from the retiring list, and those are the Tusken Raider Brickheads, the Slave 1 Microfighter, and the UCS Moss Eisley Cantina. I thought that all three of these sets were retiring way too early, with the Tusken Raider Brickheads and Boba Fett Microfighter having just released this January, and the Moss Eisley Cantina being one of the greatest UCS sets of all time, so seeing them get an extended lifespan is amazing. Moving on to all the sets that we're going to be saying goodbye to at the end of 2023, and starting off with all the new ones which have been added to the list. First up, we have a duo of sets which just released within the past couple of months, and those are the Battle of Endor Heroes Brickheads in the 2023 Advent Calendar. The Advent Calendar was to be expected since they're usually available for only a few months at most, but the Endor Heroes Brickheads being retired is a shock. With the normal Brickheads like the Tusking Raider Brickheads being given an expanded lifespan, you would expect the Endor Heroes collection of Brickheads to be given at least that long, but instead it's only getting 7 months, which is an extremely short lifespan for any LEGO set. Moving on to the other new additions on the list, we have the entire Summer 2022 wave of sets, which are the Buildable VD-1, the Inquisitor Scythe, the Ambush on Ferrix, the Justifier, and the Obi-Wan vs. Darth Vader duel. It is sad to see sets as amazing as the Inquisitor Scythe and the Buildable BD-1 go so soon, but I am glad to see the Darth Vader vs. Obi-Wan duel retiring, since it was so overpriced and overall just a bad set. I'm also glad to see the Justifier and its unjustifiable price go as well. The Ambush on Ferrix is also a good set, but was kind of overpriced, so I'm mostly indifferent to its retirement. Also going this year are the Luke Skywalker Red 5 helmet and the Death Star Trash Compactor Diorama. The helmets are a bit of a niche line of sets, so unless you particularly care about the helmet line of sets, you're probably indifferent to its retirement. The Dioramas are also a bit of a niche line of sets, but overall they are more appealing, and the Death Star Trash Compactor escape is such an iconic scene, so more people will probably think it's a shame that it's going to be retiring. And finally, the last new set on the list is the Ahsoka Brickheads, which I think is a quite puzzling decision from LEGO, since the Ahsoka TV series is about to release, meaning giving it another year would most likely result in a massive increase in sales. Since it's retiring so soon after the release of the Ahsoka TV show, you can expect it to go up in value quite a bit for at least the next few years. Moving on to the sets that have been and still are on the retirement list, first up we have a set which I am extremely happy to see go, and that is the 4 Plus ATST, which might be one of, if not the most overpriced sets of all time. For $35, what you get in this set is ridiculously disproportionate. Just to make the comparison clear, this set costs more than the 2020 501st Battle Pack, the same as the 2022 Dark Trooper Attack, and just a few dollars less than the TIE Fighter, which is absolutely mind-boggling for how small of a set it is. Now that we've mentioned them though, we may as well move on to the next sets on the list, which are the Dark Trooper Attack, the TIE Fighter, and the X-Wing. Seeing these sets retiring is extremely sad because they were all amazing. The TIE Fighter and X-Wing were released in 2021, so I can understand their retirement to an extent, but seeing as the Dark Trooper Attack was just released last year, I think it really should have been given another year on shelves. Next up, we have a trio of Hoth sets, which are the Snow Trooper Battle Pack, the Hoth ATST, and the Hoth ATAT. Originally, I thought that these sets were retiring too early, but thinking about it more, I'm actually fine with them retiring. Battle Packs usually only last 18 to 24 months, so the Snow Trooper Battle Pack retiring at this point in time is normal. And since we've had so many versions of the AAT and the ATAT, we should expect new versions within the next couple years. Next, we have the Mandalorian and Grogu Brickheads, which has had a lifespan of three and a half years, and I'm fine with it retiring. After that on the list, we have the Grogu Buildable Character, which I think is retiring a bit too early. I don't have a big problem with its retirement, but I would have preferred if it remained on shelves for one more year. Next up on the list, we have two more diorama sets, those being the Death Star Trench One and the Dago Training. The Death Star Trench One was extremely overpriced, so I'm fine with it retiring, but the Dago Training was much better priced and overall a much better set, so seeing it retire now is very disappointing. Next up on the list is the Slave One, which has had a good lifespan and will probably be remade within the next couple of years, so it retiring now is perfectly fine. After that on the list, we have the UCS Gunship, which has a great build, but is also kind of a meme, so I think retiring now is the perfect exit for it. Next, we have two more sets, which I'm glad to see go, and those are the Dark Trooper Helmet and the Boba Fett's Throne Room. Both of them were overpriced and had mediocre builds at best, so I think retiring them now is a good thing. Moving on to the penultimate set on the list, we have the Playscale Laser Crest. With a lifespan of three and a half years at the time of retirement, it's had a good life, and with the UCS version still available, I don't have any problem with the Playscale version finally retiring. And finally, the last LEGO Star Wars set we have on the retirement list for 2023 is the Republic Fighter Tank. Seeing it retiring so soon is extremely disappointing since it has such an amazing minifigure selection that most definitely would have fueled sales for at least another year, if not even longer than that. Alright everyone, that is the full updated list of LEGO Star Wars sets retiring in 2023. Tell me your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. Which sets do you think deserve to be on this list? Which sets do you think should have been given an extended lifespan? Overall, do you think this is a good selection of sets to retire or a bad one? And one last thing before you leave, please remember to hit the subscribe button, ring the notifications bell, and leave a like on the video. Bye!